we are doing a little bit more with our line of best fit, which also is referred to as your trend line. That is the same exact thing. And even a third word that they use sometimes for it is they will also refer to it as a linear regression. So you got to know those three things, line of best fit, trend line, or linear regression. That means they're asking you to do the same thing, what, no matter which way they ask you for it. So your line of best fit is the line that is closest to the data points in a scatter plot. So you guys were kind of sketching pictures of your lines of best fit last class. You had your scatter plot and kind of go right through the middle of your data. That was our line of best fit. <laughs> because it's a line, the equation for it would be y equals ax plus b. So instead of an m, they use an a, but that is the same thing as your slope. m slope. So all they did is they replaced it with the letter a. So what we're going to actually be doing today is we are actually going to be calculating what your line of best fit is. And we're going to be using your calculator to do that. So first we have here directions on how to create a scatter plot, which you have to create your scatter plot in order to do your line of best fit. So instead of reading through step by step by step, when we get to an example, we're going to go through it then. And then down here are the directions, again, in case you need them later on, and finding your R value and your line of best fit. Remember, the R value is your correlation coefficient. And the correlation coefficient tells us how strong of a connection do we have. If your correlation coefficient is close to 1, it's a strong correlation value. If it's closer to 0, it's kind of a weaker value. So let's get out our calculator. First thing we need to do with our calculator is we need to make sure that our diagnostics are turned on. You're always going to need that. So the way we do that is you hit second and then the number zero. That brings you to your catalog. Come on, Michael. Get your calculator. Second zero so that we're in our catalog. If you push this button right here, x to the negative one, that's going to skip us down to the letter d's, which makes our search a little bit faster. And we're looking for the one that says diagnostics on. There we go. So there's my diagnostics on. So I'm going to hit enter and select it. And then hit enter again so it says done. Second zero. I skipped down to my D's by pushing the X to the negative one. And then I went down to diagnostics on and hit enter twice. So everybody got their diagnostics on? So what we need to do next is read through the problem, see what it wants. It says, Emma recently purchased a new car. She decided to keep track of how many gallons of gas she used on five of her business trips. The results are shown in the table below. Write the linear regression equation for these data where miles driven is the independent variable. Round all values to the nearest hundredth. So what we need to do is what we've been doing before. We're going to type into our list our L1, and we're going to have an L2 this time. L1 would be your miles driven. L2 would be your numbers of gallons used. So let's have you go ahead and type that into your calculator.
one of your little visual checks for this one is both of your lists should have the same exact numbers, number of numbers, I should say. Sometimes if you accidentally miss one, one list has something more, and then you're going to get an error in your calculator. So you got to always make sure you have the same number of things entered into each list. So what we're going to do first is we're going to create a scatter plot first. So I'm going to follow this set of directions up here first. There we go. So we typed in our data. Check. So next we're going to go to second y equals, and that's going to give us our stat plot. So I'm going to push the second y equals. I have all my stat plots. We have lots of different stat plots here. We're always going to select the first one, so I'm going to hit enter. So now I have all this different information to check. I want to first off turn this on because I'm trying to make a scatter plot. So I'm going to turn stat plot one on. You should have the first one selected under type. That is your scatter plot right there, all your random points. As you can see, we can make other things. You could make a histogram. You can make a box and whisker on here. So many different things we can do in this, but we're going to stick with our scatter plot. Your X list should say L1. That's where you put your first set of information. Your Y list needs to say L2 because that's where we put our second set of information. I just hit the down arrow. Let's me move up and down. And then as far as the mark, it does not matter if you want it to look like a little box. You can select that. You can make it look like a plus sign or little dots, whichever one you prefer. That doesn't matter. So once we have that, we're going to then hit the zoom button. And we want the one that says zoom stats. Where is it? There it is. Good old number nine, zoom stats. Since we're doing a statistics graph, our scatter plot, we need the stat function. So then hopefully you have a scatter plot that looks similar to mine on there. We all at that point? So now we've made our scatter plot. We can actually figure out what our, lin our line of best fit is going to be. So we're going to go back to the stat button. We're going to go over to calculate. So I'm going to calculate some values. And we want, as I said, line of best fit is the same as a linear regression. So this lin reg. That's shorthand for your linear regression. They even show you it's AX plus B. That's your hint that it's a line. So we want choice four. And then hit enter. <coughs> so right up here, this first thing they have written here, that is your generic formula for your linear regression. Y equals AX plus B. So I'm going to write that first down here. Y equals A, X plus B. So then after that, they give you the value for A, and they give you the value for B. We just have to write them into our equation. Now, we are told to round to the nearest hundredth. So our A value to the nearest hundredth would be what point? No. Hundredth means two numbers after the decimal. Does the one make the five change at all? So it's 0 0.05. So y equals 0 0.05x. So now I've got to figure out what we're plugging in for b. So b is negative 0.919, but that 9 makes that 1 turn into a what? 2. So it's negative 0.9. And that's our equation for a line of best fit. <laughs> so then our next part down here says, using your equation, if you drive 500 miles, how many gallons of gas would you expect to use? So we've got to figure out miles. Is that our x or our y? 
Yes, X. Since it's the first part of the column, it's kind of like those normal tables that you're used to. Your miles are your X's. So I'm going to plug 500 in for my X. So 0 0.05 times 500 minus 0.92. So let's have you go ahead and figure out what your Y is going to be for that. All right, what did you say? What would we get? 24.08 gallons. So that's how much gas we would expect to use if we drive 500 miles. <coughs> All right, let's try another one because the only way we're going to get used to this stuff in the calculator is if we just keep doing it over and over and over again. We've got to keep practicing it. All right, so given the data below, draw a scatter plot to represent the data. Remember, when making a scatter plot, do not connect your dots. So we're going to be typing this into L1, and then your Regent score is going to go into L2. So let's look at our questions down below. We have what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable. So this is like what we were just doing before. Your independent variable is always your x-axis. So which one was on our x-axis? Study, Study hours. That is your independent variable. Remember, the independent variable, that's generally the one that can be controlled by the person. You control how many hours you study. So therefore, our dependent variable would be your Regents score. Your score on the Regents depends on how many hours you study for. Looking at our graph there, are you going to get a good score if you study for very few hours? No. The more you study, the better you're going to do. Is the trend of the data positive or negative? So basically, if I were to draw my line of best fit, would it be a positive slope or a negative slope? Positive. positive. So this would be positive. That's exactly what your slope would be. What is the value of the correlation coefficient round to the nearest thousandth? What does this tell you about the data? So in order to get this, your correlation coefficient, you have to do your linear regression. So if you did not do that yet, Let's have you do that now. So you have all your data typed in. So all you would have to do is go back to your stat, over to calculate, and then you want to do number four, your linear regression. <coughs> so your correlation coefficient is your R value. I see a lot of people not typing this stuff in. All you got to do is stat, over to calc, number four. No, to the nearest... Thousandth, so that's three numbers. 0.855. Thousand. There's three numbers in thousand. That means three numbers after your decimal. So what does this tell you about the data? Now is 0.855 close to one? Yes. Yeah, that's pretty close to one. So this tells us that there is a strong positive correlation between study hours and Regent score. So that's what we'd have to write. There is a strong positive correlation between hours studied and Regents score. If that value, as I said before, was closer to zero than to one, it would be a weak positive correlation. If that value were negative, then it would be a strong negative correlation. Part D you should already have the values in your calculator. We had to get that in order to find your correlation coefficient. 
Find the equation for your line of best fit, rounding to the nearest hundredth. Yeah, so that's where you need your A and your B value that they give you. Hundredth, two numbers after the decimal. So isn't it like 6.27? Oh, it's a 7-7? Seven, seven? No, it's not. Hundredth is two numbers after the decimal. Six point two seven three. So yeah, two seven. The way you're saying, I thought it was seven and then a seven, so then it would have rounded up to an eight. And then our B value should be forty nine point seven eight. So there's our equation for a line of best fit. So interpret the meaning of the estimate of the slope and the y-intercept of the line. So again, this is going back a few units here. So your slope is your change in y, which is your region score, over change in x, which is your hours studied. So what this is saying is your score increases 6.27 points for every hour studied. If my uh, slope was a negative, it would have been that my score decreases 6.27 points for every hour studied, but it wouldn't be that for this example. So then our y-intercept is 48.78. How many hours studied would we have studied for a y-intercept value? Nope. Y-intercept is right here on the y-axis where our study hours is what? Zero. Zero. So this is saying if you study zero hours you will get a 49.78. So anytime they ask you for the y-intercept, that's when x is zero. In this case, our x was study hours. So studying for zero hours, you can expect to get a 49.78. So if a student received a score of 85 on the Regents exam, how many hours can you predict this student studied based on your equation from Part D round to the nearest tenth? So we're going to put 85 in for our Y. And then solve for our X, and that will tell us how many hours we can expect that they studied for. So go ahead, solve your equation. Subtract your 49.78 first. subtract that you should get 35.22 equals 6.27x and then what do we divide by very good 6.27 so we get a big huge long decimal which you should always write first I point six one Seven, two, four, eight, eight. They want our final answer though to the nearest tenth. 
So what would that be? 5.6. So I predict that they studied for 5.6 hours. <laughs>